Today we're talking about Brexit, one of those political issues that I hope gets resolved really soon because I am seriously running low on original jokes. I mean, it's been three years. At this point, it feels like Britain stormed out of the party a few hours ago, but's loitering in the front lawn because Uber drivers just keep canceling on them. He made a right turn back on the highway? Man, I'm gonna be here all night. Now, I'm not sure how much you guys have heard, but the last few days in British politics have been so crazy that they almost broke into CNN's 24 hour coverage of whatever Trump is saying on a given day. Of course, a major contributor to this craziness is the fact that, as of writing this script, Britain is scheduled to drop out of the EU October 31st. Guess one negotiator was having fun with the dates on that one, if there's no extension or deal given. Before we get into this weekend though, I gotta give you a little bit of context. On Friday, Boris Johnson had a major victory, but don't get too used to saying that phrase. Boris Johnson declared earlier today that he'd struck a new Brexit agreement with the European Union, a great new deal in his words that takes back control. But crucially, the deal still needs the approval of both the UK and European parliaments. Now if you want to understand the changes that deal made, I just made a video about it. I also recently learned how to link to a video in the corner of my current one. So if you want to have YouTube abruptly pause this to check that out, click there now. For now though, the British and European leaders had just agreed to a new deal for Brexit. Great. Now all you have to do is pass it through the UK and European parliaments and you'll be successfully Brexited. Of course, this is the exact same situation Theresa May found herself in many times as she unsuccessfully held four separate votes to approve her Brexit deal. By the end, it felt like her bill was about as likely to succeed as other competing brands in a Tide commercial. So with this new agreement and this firm and quickly approaching deadline, we start this crazy parliamentary weekend. The first thing we saw was the passage of the Litwin Amendment. The Litwin Amendment is an amendment which effectively means Parliament with, will, will withhold its approval of this deal until the government first gets ratification through Parliament on the legislation. Whew, that seems overly complicated. Boy, you guys are not trying to make this easy on yourselves. If you could get as many votes approving the Brexit deal as you could for this amendment that says the deal can only pass when another piece of legislation passes first, this would be the end of your Brexit story. The basic idea here is for Brexit to succeed, you need two things. You need to approve the deal negotiated between the EU and UK. And you need a UK bill that says, yeah, all the stuff we said we're going to do, well, we're actually going to do it. It's the difference between your usually reliable friend giving you an IOU versus giving you cash. So now these two entities need to be approved one at a time. Sounds like not that controversial of a change. I mean, you weren't planning on doing all the things you agreed to, right? Why is this so significant? Well, it just means that one more thing has to be passed by the 31st to avoid a no-deal Brexit. The next move is the government says it will try to introduce and get the legislation passed so that they can have this meaningful vote before October the 31st. So why, why throw another step into this process? Was Parliament worried that if the UK finally successfully brexited, they'd run out of things to talk about? Well, it was actually a very strategic delay, as Parliament had passed a bill earlier in the year that said that if there wasn't a deal passed by 11 o'clock that Saturday, Johnson had to write the EU a letter asking for an extension. There was a vote scheduled for Johnson's deal that day, but... Well, not much use voting on it now that you need to pass a piece of domestic legislation first. Because of this, Boris Johnson had to write a letter to the EU asking for an extension on the Brexit Halloween deadline. Don't worry though, he was able to express himself when he wrote a second letter saying, please disregard my previous message, don't give us an extension. 
Legally speaking, though, he did request an extension, so the ball is in the European Commission's court as to whether they want to ignore the second personal letter or not. Of course, I would not go using all my best jokes in this episode, because as of last report, the European Commission has confirmed that, despite the Prime Minister's unconventional approach to requesting a further Brexit delay, Brussels is considering the terms of a further prolongment of the UK's membership. Yeah, this thing seriously might never end. Don't worry though, we're not even close to the end of the Brexit drama of this week, because Boris Johnson had a plan. Well, that's a bit generous, he had a momentary lapse in judgement that he committed to. On Monday, he suggested, you know what would be a good idea? What if we had Parliament vote on this agreement? Sure, maybe Parliament said two days ago that they weren't going to approve this deal until they passed a corresponding domestic bill, but that was Saturday. Nobody will remember. Unfortunately for him, Today's motion is in substance the same as Saturday's motion, and the House has decided the matter. Today's circumstances are in substance the same as Saturday's circumstances. My ruling is therefore that the motion will not be debated today as it would be repetitive and disorderly to do so. So that brings us to Monday. Hey, that's yesterday. On Monday, Boris Johnson dropped the 115 page domestic bill that has to pass in order for a vote to be able to be allowed on his Brexit agreement. He said, hey, guess what? Hope you guys are fast readers because tomorrow we're voting on whether to push this through to committee or not. Then today, apparently people either speed read this thing or just kinda said yes, changed the subject and kept their heads down. Because we saw... We're just hearing from the speaker, John Burko there, that lawmakers have approved the second reading of that legislation. That was a result that was widely expected. But basically today was the first time that MPs uh, got the opportunity to vote on whether to back Boris Johnson's deal in principle. It was definitely a good sign. Of course, voting for something into committee is not passing it. No, that would be too easy. This means that now this legislation will be open to amendments and a discussion before going to a passing vote that will hopefully happen on Thursday or Friday. Only if that passes will Prime Minister Johnson then be able to reintroduce his actual agreement with the European Union for passage. Before I close out this episode, I just want to lay out the competing goals of three groups that we're about to see emerging. First, Boris Johnson, the Conservative members of the United Kingdom's Parliament. What they want is simple, pass this domestic law and then pass the agreement. Of course, all of this would ideally have to happen before Halloween, also known as the day a no deal Brexit would be triggered if there was no deal or extension. Yeah, there's definitely cramming pretty hard right now. Then you have Europe. Their consensus seems to be a combination of not wanting a no deal Brexit and wanting to end this multi year waking bureaucratic nightmare. Of course, at the same time, they want to apply all of the most punishing terms to the United Kingdom as a disincentive to countries like Italy who might be looking to jump ship. The Europe's going to be playing its hand close to its chest and really get the lay of the land in the UK. If it looks like the UK Conservatives are going to successfully get all of this passed, no point in extension. Because of this, most people are expecting a real buzzer shot extension if a UK deal isn't sitting on their desk waiting for their signature by the end of October. They really want to turn on the pressure to get some deal passed through the UK to end this thing. Then finally, you have the Liberals. Do you frame this as a choice between a deal and no deal? Or you, do you frame this as a choice between a deal and an extension? I think it is definitely between a deal and an extension. Yeah, the strategy here is the EU is all but guaranteed to give us another extension. So let's just stall. It's already been pretty generally accepted that during the aforementioned amendment period that's going to happen for this domestic legislation, liberals are going to try to stuff through as many poison pills that it'll be able to kill an elephant. 
This would include amendments like keeping the United Kingdom in the EU's customs union, or saying that we need to put a second vote as to whether to Brexit or not into the Brexit bill. Hey, what's another few years in limbo at this point? I swear, Saudi Aramco is going to go public before you guys figure this one out. So that's what just happened and is about to happen regarding the Brexit negotiations. Until probably a few days from now, thank you and that's definitely not all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube! If you want to support independent, nonpartisan news, remember to subscribe by clicking on this floating logo to the right of my head. Ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring and give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.